Uh, my name is Shannon Fritch, and I was diagnosed July 15th, July 18th of 2016 I mean, at three, just because of the size of it. Um, if it hadn't been for the ginormous size, it was 20 centimeters. It would have, yeah, it would have, it was the size of a little turkey. It would have been um, stage two because it had not metastasized anywhere. So I was very blessed. The PET scan showed it had not spread anywhere, but it was so enormous. It was like a little baby. Yeah. So tell me like, like what were your symptoms leading up to that? Oh, Besides God. being a huge lump, I'm assuming. Yeah. So think of being pregnant, everything you have when you're pregnant, you, you got, um, reflex. You can't take a deep breath. You're up five times a night going to the bathroom. Um, and then add on to that for a couple of years, probably just hot flashes, like so intense, but I was 49 when I was diagnosed mm -hmm. almost 50. So I just thought, Oh, I'm going through menopause right. and chalked it up to that. And, um, but it was horrible, horrible, hot flashes, um, pain in my side, I'm a side sleeper. So whenever I would roll over every night, I would wake myself up crying with the, the flank pain and didn't know what it was. And then I also had pain in the, like the lower middle of my back. Uh -huh. Um, I didn't know what that was. And I just thought, Oh, I'm out of shape. I'm overweight. I need to lose 30 pounds. Um, the other big thing was my blood pressure. Uh -huh. I was on three blood pressure meds and it was not, these meds were not touching my blood pressure. My blood pressure was still about 160 over one teens, 120 up to like 180 over 120. And they wow. just kept putting me on more blood pressure medicine. So, um, those were my symptoms. Reflex was the big one. That's what got me into the doctor. Um, finally, um, so I was diagnosed in July. I finally went to the doctor that January before that to um, find out what's going on. You know, like, why am I having all this reflux? And they put me on, she put me on Omeprazole. Mm -hmm. And a month later I came back and it was worse than before. And my husband and I didn't like, you know, he's, he's the son of a physician. So he's like, these, these side effects are really bad. You don't want to stay on this a long time. Right. So, um, so my doctor took me off of that because it wasn't helping and we didn't really do anything. And then I was because of the pain and everything. And then I had my follow-up with my OB, just my regular appointment. And they did an ultrasound. It was an internal ultrasound just to check out because I have like fibroids and all that. They never found it. And by that time it had to have been huge. And in that ultrasound, never found it, never said anything, never were. He was never clued in that wow. there was this enormous mass there because I he wasn't looking for it. Right. And um, and it wasn't until that summer I remember telling my friend, there's something in here. I don't know what it is, I don't know where it is, but there's something in I'm pointing into my abdomen, there's something in here that's not supposed to be here. Right. Because I hurt and um and I couldn't breathe, I couldn't get a deep breath underneath like you know when you cough and you have to take a deep breath first or you sneeze I couldn't do that I couldn't mm -hmm. yawn I couldn't I could not get a deep breath and um so I went in back to my physician my my primary care and at that day I had a pain up here in my right side like upper right side under my breastbone and she said oh that's your gallbladder so um you can, you know, you need to go in and get an ultrasound on your gallbladder. So I went in on that Friday morning, the 18th, 15th, I think it was 15th. Anyway, I went in, it was a Friday morning. I went in and got an ultrasound and I was just laying there praying like, Lord, I know there's something in here, whatever it is. I don't care if it's bad, let them find it because I'm miserable. Right. And, um, that, tech was just, she was the epitome of a great tech. She didn't give anything away, yes. but I knew right away because she quit, she quit wanding in that area. And then she was all over my abdomen 
she had me roll over. She was all over my back. And she, and then she said, okay, um, the doctor will be in contact with you. I'm like, well, do you know how long? And she said, well, probably early next week. I got out to my car. Um, I had to do an errand and I forgot to take my phone in with me to my friends on this errand. And when I was in there, my doctor had called already and said, you need to get back. So it, anyway, I was on my way to the mall to do some shopping with my daughter. And I looked down and see, I missed a call from my doctor and called her back. And they're like, um, they found a mass. You don't know where, what it's attached to. You need to get back. We've already set you up with CAT scan. My doctor lives an hour away. So she's in a whole different network, you know, than I am locally. So um, I went back in that afternoon and had my cats or had the cat scan done and that's when they started um that's when my world just turned upside down and um so they had her on the phone with me at the cat scan location and she said I can't see size is coming through I can just see a couple of numbers and I see a, an 11 and then a 14 but it's got to be millimeters because centimeters is just too big right um but we don't know what it is so you need a biopsy oh. um yeah now that I know she said you need a biopsy so if you want to stay in Lafayette where I live you'll have to find your own doctor but if you come to Indy I know where to send you and um so I have a friend who is an interventional radiologist in our health group so I texted him. I said, hey, can you look at my scans? They're coming through right now. I give you permission to look at everything. And he called me back and he said, um, I am nine. God bless this because I don't think I'd be here if it weren't for him. He, he hit it right on the nail right away. He said, I am 99% sure that this is adrenal cancer and it's bad. This is a beast and it needs to come out like yesterday. Yeah. You don't need a biopsy you need a specialist and, and I'm like, you know, so then, you know, you, you hear kids, you know, you, you know what it's like when you hear that C word. And so everything just starts spinning right. and I'm like, well, who, where do I go? He said, you just go home, try to relax. I'll find you a doctor. And so he, this was a Friday afternoon at three thirty, four o'clock. So he's on the phone <clears throat> all that night trying to get a hold of his surgeon friend, <clears throat> a urologist who works here, who had actually worked in Indy and had seen adrenal cancer once before. I know it was totally like God in all of this. Jesus. And yeah. Yeah. And so he could never, he couldn't get a hold of him. In the meantime, we our minds are just exploding. We're trying to process this. And it came back that it was centimeters. He looked on the thing. He said, no, this is centimeters. And it was 19 at the time, 19 by 14 by 11 centimeters. I'm like, I don't know centimeters. I know inches. So I came home and we had gone to the grocery and there was a cantaloupe on our table. I'm like, hmm. So I found a centimeter measure and I measured it. And it was, it was like bigger than that cantaloupe. I'm like, holy cow. Wow. So um, the next day he called and said, um, I found your surgeon. They will be calling you first thing Monday morning. They're squeezing you in. Just be ready. Whoops, my light went off. Um, just be ready to, sorry, I can't get my light back on. Um, just be ready to um, go when they need you. Be up and dressed and ready. So um, Monday morning, they called, we went in. And, excuse me. He um, got me in within three weeks and he had another surgeon, <clears throat> oh my goodness, another surgeon friend of his that was on sabbatical and in town who was from Indy who had also seen adrenal cancer before. So the two of them did my surgery three weeks later and um, it took two of them because one had to lift it out and I got pictures of it. You know, he's holding it in two hands. It was just it was enormous. So yeah, it was crazy. So that's, um, that's kind of how they found it. That's my long story. Yeah. How found it. Long answer. You might have to edit that a bunch. No, that's okay. But I think I've seen pictures of it. 
What? Didn't you send me pictures of it before? I did. I think yeah. I did. Yeah. Let's it's just say crazy. somebody else in our family had to do the Thanksgiving <laughs> turkey. <that> yeah. <laughs> I think, it, yeah, you deserve yeah, it. Was, it was not pleasant. So. I think you're still here. Yes. So, okay. Yeah. So that was, wow. Um, kind of answered that question for me. Um, so why do you think it's important to see an expert? Oh gosh, because you do not want to get a biopsy. So if I, I'm, I mean, mine was too big. It wouldn't have mattered a biopsy or not, but if they would have biopsied that thing, it would have just, I wouldn't be here today. It would have spread everywhere. Right. Um, af, so I saw the surgeon on Monday, on Wednesday, I think it was that Wednesday, I went in for my PET scan and it had not spread anywhere. I mean, like it was just, it looked like the sun glowing, but it was not anywhere else. Um, so I was so blessed with that. Yeah. But um, after, oh, and this was another, I didn't understand this at the time, but so I was in the hospital for a week. I had complications. I was in the hospital for a week. And one of the um, oncologists in town that came to visit me in my room used to work with Dr. Foho. I had no, I didn't understand this at the time. You know, I hadn't met any, I had not found the adrenal cancer Facebook groups. I had not met any, anybody. I didn't know a single soul right. and all the doctors are saying, you know, everything that you said, well, my friend that, that said, I'll find you the doctor. He said, don't look in any Mark manuals. Cause my husband has a ton. Yeah. He said, don't look in Mark manuals. Don't get on the internet. It's bad. You're yeah. not gonna, you're just don't do it. And right. of course my husband did. And yeah. he was a researcher at a university. So he starts researching. Mm -hmm. and finding out about my detain and all this stuff but he doesn't tell me a lot of it you know he doesn't want to give me all the bad news enough that I knew right that the, so anyway they they gave me a 20 percent chance of living for five years and they wanted me to do my detain so I met with that oncologist after I got out of the hospital and um but I didn't know Dr. Foho's name then but he was like I used to work out here at NIH with Dr. Foho and um so anyway I, I it's just so important I know I'm all over the place it's, it's just important I'm not answering your question it's so important to see a specialist because they've seen a lot of it when most doctors never see this at all and I was just so blessed to have my surgeon had actually treated someone with it you know right. like one case but that's more than any more than a lot um well and it I sounds think. like your interventional radiologist friend really he yeah. knew I don't know how he knew but he knew I mean he yeah yeah that that is, that was huge know. if anybody else if I had the yeah I I've I've thanked him so many times over the years if any if he hadn't have looked at that yeah I wouldn't be here today. Yeah. I just, I know I wouldn't. Yeah. Oh, well, so. okay. So I bought um, him a case of beer. Did you? <laughs> oh yeah. He deserves beer, vodka. Yeah. That's what he wanted. Well, yeah. Heck yeah. If that's what he drinks. Give it to him. Yeah. <laughs> um, what advice would you give to a newly diagnosed patient? Oh, that's so easy. One, um, get multiple expert opinions, join the adrenal cancer Facebook groups. They were huge in helping me through this and giving me hope and giving me um, resources. Um, do your own research. Don't just listen to any doctor. I mean, even when you see the experts, you know, still do your own research. Um, but if you're not seeing an expert, definitely do your own research. Um, if you're a person of prayer, pray, 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 yeah. and trust your gut. That's, that's the biggest thing. And then this doesn't come with any adrenal cancer doctors, but don't be afraid to fire your doctor. If you don't have a doctor that you like, that you feel isn't doing things in your best interest, do not be afraid to fire them. Right. I had to do that for other things in my life, but, um, this is you, this is your life. This is, 
um, your future, Mm -hmm. your family's future. So you're in the driver's seat and you can fire a doctor that you don't like. Right. Right. Tell me more about the support group. This will make me cry. Okay. So the support, when I found the Facebook group, I was home from the hospital and I didn't, you know, I was giving, getting all this, all these, um, the stuff about, you got to take mitotane and you're going to need radiation. And so I was, you know, meeting with these doctors to figure it out. And I just, it did not sit well with me to do mitotane because, and I, I did end up going to see Dr. Hammer and they were great. Um, and he was on the fence about me taking my detain because my, what is, um, the mitotic rate was very low. I was nine. And they, he said, if it were 20 or above, I would tell you do it because it's a fast growing, but I guess mine was very slow growing. And so he said, I could go either way, but if you were my sister, I'd tell you to try it. But I was homeschooling. I couldn't afford to be sleeping 18 hours a day and feeling, and I know that sounds like a weird reason, but it had not spread. And I just could not see putting poison in my body Mm -hmm. for something that we couldn't see that wasn't there. Right. So, and that was just my gut. And so that I chose to go with my gut and I said, no, I won't do that, but I'll do radiation. So I found an oncologist, radiation oncologist down here who worked with um, Dr. Jolly up in Michigan. And so I got every, you know, I got my form, I got all marked up and we were ready to start uh, the night before. And, but we still were just not sure about it. We still had this nagging, this isn't right, but I got to do something. And, and um, the night before one of the women that I had met on one of these groups was a pathologist. She was an animal pathologist, but she was a pathologist. And I was telling her, you know, I'm going to lose my, I'm going to lose my other adrenal gland. I'm going to lose my spleen. I'm going to lose um, like tons of things that are my immune system. Like, right. how am I going to be able to fight off any more cancer if it comes back, if half my immune system's gone? And she said, that just doesn't sound right. I'll look at your path report if you want. So I sent it to her and she said, I think you need a second opinion. I think you should call Dr. Boho. So immediately I contacted my oncologist. I said, um, we're not going to start tomorrow. Let's put it off. Let's send everything to Dr. Boho. My oncologist here is a saint. I love him. He is so humble. And he's like, I know as much about this as you do. So we're going to the experts. Right. And so he, we sent everything to Dr. Boho and, um, and it took six weeks for him to come back because he was out of the country, but he said, no, don't, don't do radiation. Don't do anything. Just get scanned every three months. And if it comes back, go in for more surgery and do high pec, um, which is his procedure that has, he's had lots of success with. And as soon as he said that this piece just washed over me and like, that's what I'm doing. So that was one, one instance of, um, so sorry, the group. Oh, that's okay. One instance of the group just really helping me out and and changing my my direct my direction of plan that I was going to do. And I'm so grateful for it. I'm so thankful. And my decision is not the decision everyone should be making because we're all so different. But it was the right one for me. Um, but the other thing is, before I had started meeting with these doctors and. I started meeting with them and like trying to make these decisions. I'm like, oh, my dad had just passed away the year before. And I was just sitting there crying. And I had already asked for um, approval to get into this Facebook group. And I'm like, dad, I wish you were still alive so you could help me figure this out. I don't know what to do. And I'm just sitting there crying. And, and then the next day I get the welcome to the group and everybody's welcoming me on. And then this one guy says, welcome. How do you know so-and-so? And he named my brother. And you know, these groups are so 
Right. There's so few people, but everybody's around the country and the world. Sure. So it's not like we're just a small little locale. I'm like, uh, that's my brother. How do you know him? And he said, well, I don't know him, but I knew Bernie, who was my dad. And I'm like, how did you know my dad? And he said, well, I served with him in the Knights of Columbus. And I just started crying. I'm like, you, it was Steve Hoffman. Oh, it I was Steve so Hoffman. Yeah. Oh. He knew my dad. And I just started bawling. So Steve and I are from the same hometown. And so I said, you have no idea what I was praying last night. And I said, if my dad were still alive and knew you were struggling, you were fighting this cancer, he would have right away said, you need to talk to Steve Hoffman. And here's Steve right. telling right. me. So Steve, Steve was actually, Steve was my hope. It was my hope because, um, so we ended up, that was in September. We decided to get together for Christmas that year and have a two in a million first annual Christmas dinner with our spouses. Then, um, he invited Fred, remember Fred, mm -hmm. um, Fred lived right across the river. So I got there and, um, so Fred and his wife, Mary were there and, when I saw Steve, it was like, I'd known him forever. And I just hugged him and started crying. And we, that dinner was just so hopeful, so hopeful because, you know, Steve, I think at that time was about eight years out right. and he was still fighting. I mean, he was a, he fought, Yes, he did. but he was still fighting, but he was so hopeful. And he would just always encourage me and say, you know, don't give up this, you know, you've got this just I don't know. He was just always, always there. And so every time I would go home to visit my parents, I would go in and visit him. And, and then we started, but then, um, so that was that Christmas, the next summer, Fred passed away. So the next Christmas we had our two in a million instead of our three in a million mm -hmm. Christmas. And now he's gone. So, um, okay. So I haven't had a Christmas dinner, you know, it's, there's just no one, you know, so then the other group that came about is you guys, all the bands. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's just awesome to talk to you face to face for the first time in all these years. Finally. Um, finally. finally. Yes. But um, the other amazing thing is one summer I was heading out to, um, we were on a, on a vacation, camping vacation, and we went out to Colorado. Turned out I was camping. 10 minutes from velvet. Oh. So, so she picked me up and we went out to breakfast and, um, it was just great meeting her. It's just fabulous to me. So that's, I guess this is a very long explanation. I'm sure you're going to have to, to edit a lot of this, okay. but, um, the, uh, the other thing is just being able to meet people who know what this disease is, to know what you're going through, to know the emotions that you go through, because you're not probably going to not meet anyone in your same town with right. you or an hour or two away from you. Steve was three hours away from me. Turns out there's five people. I'm a cluster of five in the greater Louisville area. Right. Um, and we've talked about this before that there's, um, there was a Raytheon plant or something down there. Yeah. Um, so, and then where I am in little this little podunk town here in Indiana, there was another girl who died with adrenal cancer um, six months before I was diagnosed. Oh. And turns out her brother goes to church with us. <laughs> like, and I live in a town of probably 2,000 people. So I would, so I would like, I, God, I'm like still, I try not to focus on that but it's I know it I know me, so right? took the conversation in a different direction no 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 but it that, that gets me and I would love to do like a whole nother <laughs> interview and video and whatever about that with all yes. the doctors because yeah. there's something to it and I understand that all of our doctors of course are looking more for the cure or right. whatever treatment it is that can help us but I wish um the government could spend a little bit of money on let's do some preventative stuff. Absolutely. So yeah. that these doctors don't have to work so hard on. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. All this poison that's out there. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I, and there's nowhere you can go. I don't feel like there's the whole world. No. So, I know. I know. Just remain. Something's going to take you. So you just have to, right. it's, you just have to be ready. And that's, you know, I, I did a lot of wrestling, a lot of wrestling with God and, um, but I've come on the other side of it. And there so, you know, if I, if I go, I'm ready. Yeah. Um, thank, thank you, God. It's been five, six, oh my gosh, six years, yeah. six and a half years. It's yeah. never come back yet. Yep. I'm down to one year scans. Wow. And uh, yeah, I, I just, I don't feel like I've earned, and, and I know you'll argue with me. I don't feel like I've earned the title of adrenal cancer warrior because I oh. didn't have to fight like you guys have fought. I didn't have to go through all the treatments. Now the fear and everything was always there and it's still there every okay. single day. And that's what people don't get every single day. Even when you don't talk about it, it's there. Even when they think, oh, you forgot about it. It's there every single day. Yeah. A little twinge, a little anything. You're like, oh no, is it coming back? Right. You know, like you get a hot flash. Oh my gosh, is it coming back? I sneezed yeah. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. Exactly. Yeah, I know I, it'll never go away, but no. you just have to, you just learn to live with it and, and live, live. I, my theme song is live like you were dying. I play, play, play that every anniversary oh. of when I was diagnosed and every anniversary of my, um, surgery when it was removed, because it's so true. It's yeah, yeah that's my theme song. So really that's another long thing. That's how the the Facebook groups just give you hope because you meet all these people that really help you through. Yes. Yeah. So on those days that are bad, I know that we all get on and they're like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it helps. It does. Right. It, it helps. does. And I was on for a long time and then I had to take a break because it was just too much, you know, yeah. like, and, and that's okay. I want to tell people that too. It's okay to take a break mm -hmm. because you got to do what you need to do mentally to get through it. And if you need to take a break from hearing everybody else's stuff and, and just try to get back into your own normal world, right. that's what you got to do. Yep. And then you can come back when you're ready and help other people and you right. know, be a, be a source of hope for other people too. And I feel like for me, that's what I am because I haven't had any of the procedures. And I know that there's been a few people on there. Is there anybody that's you know, over five years out that hasn't, that chose not to do anything. And so I, I guess I'm not hope, hopefully for those people that yeah. want to know you can choose a different path, but to choose that path, again, I would go back to do your research, consult with multiple experts, right. talk to lots of people right, and pray, and then trust your gut. Right. Because you don't want to just say, well, I'm not taking anything. Right. Right. Because that could be the wrong decision. Right. Right. Whew. Well, um, wow. I think we, well, no, what or who gives you hope? It, oh, well, God definitely gave me hope that no matter after I wrestled with him for a long time, that no matter what the outcome was, he had control. Of, he would be, he would be in control of my family if I left. of making sure my 11 year old daughter got along. Okay. I can say that now without crying, um, without a mother, that was my, uh, yeah, that's what we fought about. That's what I fought about the most with God. Was, I have an 11 year old daughter who needs a mom. You can't take me away from her. Um, um, and then the people on the Facebook group, like Steve, Steve gave me hope. Yeah. Um, and, and you guys, in in our little babs group you know just i know we don't we don't chat a lot but when, but when we do you know i know that that we're all there for each other oh. um and and if mine comes back i know who i can rely on i yeah. know who i can go to yeah. yeah just like you guys were there for me and still are yeah yeah so thank you you're welcome thank you um uh, yeah <laughs>
Yeah, we didn't mean to. <laughs> um, so at the end, I kind of wanted to just do like a thank you to your doctors or yes. whoever it is, if you just okay. want to say. Yeah. So I would just like to thank Dr. Estabrook, my oncologist. Um, he didn't have to do anything for me in the end, but he's always been there, always um, spending as much time as needed whenever I would go in and have my scans and he would just rejoice with me every time that they were, that they were clean scans. Um, definitely my biggest thank you to Dr. Edwards, who's my friend that, that diagnosed it right away. Cause I wouldn't be here if it weren't for him saying, you don't need a biopsy. Um, to thank, you know, Dr. Hammer for meeting me and his whole team. They were, they were fabulous. I thank Dr. Foho for, for meeting with me over the phone and um, giving me the, the answer to what was in my gut, but I didn't know what that was. But when he told me the scan and high pack, Right. And then God's peace just flooded over me. So just, um, you know, I want to thank him for, for that advice, um, that I took. Um, and just thanks for all of my friends who brought me meals after my surgery and came and sat with me in the hospital because that week in the hospital was, was a long week. I, I just, when people, when people are on here and say they get out and like in two days, like what? <laughs> That's amazing. Right. Right. Um, so just all the doctors and nurses, I'm still friends with one of my nurses that I met there, um, Facebook friends with her and um, just, and then just the Facebook groups, I, everybody I've met on the Facebook groups that gave me hope and the Steve, God rest his soul and, um, and his wife, you know, who I'm still in contact with. Um, yeah. And Fred, those are, those are the ones, the two that I got to know. I will talk to you soon. Okay. Don't All right. Bye. Bye.